From our previous video in the series, we now know what GNSS is, and we can talk about how it helps us in agriculture. We'll begin with discussing how the Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS, is used with agriculture. We'll follow that with a discussion of the meaning of variable rate and precision agriculture, and conclude by putting all of the pieces together with some examples. In traditional farming, farmers would apply the same amount of inputs, such as fertilizers or insecticides, over the entire field uniformly. However, there may be areas of the field that need no insecticide or inputs at all. But until recently, there was no way to identify which parts of the field needed an input and which parts did not. Through the use of GNSS and specialized equipment, such as drones, Specific locations of a field where insects are present, for example, could be identified. Sprayers can then be programmed to turn on only at these precise locations instead of treating the entire field. This technique decreases the cost of inputs while ensuring the health of the crop. So GNSS is used to determine precise coordinate locations. For example, farmers may establish a grid system for their field. At the center of each cell of the grid is a GNSS latitude and longitude coordinate. Farmers can then program their sprayer to treat each cell with different inputs depending on the need of a particular cell. Some cells may require more fertilizer than others, for example. Some cells may have insects that need to be treated with insecticide. Inputs can be applied to the fields with precision accuracy using these techniques. This is often called variable rate, or precision agriculture, where each grid cell of a farmer's field can be precisely treated with the inputs needed based on information about the plant or soil conditions in that cell, and then programming the sprayer equipment to treat that location. As an example, this is a large field on which farmers would traditionally apply all inputs uniformly across the field, whether the entire field needed those inputs or not soil type, fertilizer needs, or drainage patterns in different areas of the field are not considered. But with precision agriculture, subdividing the field into a grid of smaller cells means different inputs and input amounts can be prescribed for each cell. Which cells need inputs, and how much, is driven by data collected about the condition of the field at each cell. So in traditional ag, the same amount of inputs are applied uniformly to the entire field. Precision agriculture, using GNSS, facilitates application of variable rates of inputs to precise locations on the field. Farmers collect data from other sources about field conditions to inform decisions about what kind and how much of inputs are needed in each cell of the field. Using the GNSS receiver on a tractor, which receives location coordinates in latitude and longitude in real time from a satellite, the input application equipment can apply inputs such as fertilizer at precise cell-by-cell -cell locations on the field. So what are these sources of information farmers use to inform decisions about what kind and how much inputs are needed in each cell of the field? Soil tests done on the field and accurate soil maps can help determine the need for fertilizer and soil drainage issues. Keeping track of yields from previous harvests is also very useful. Aerial photography collected from satellite imagery and crewed aircraft can be useful, but satellite imagery is very coarse and crewed aircraft imagery is only taken periodically. But a relatively new tool of the trade are drones, which can produce immediate information about field conditions. As you can see in this image, the farmer is holding a tablet that is getting information from the drone as it flies over the field. Green in the image are areas that indicate good growth. Yellow is where growth is poor, and red may be where there is no growth. In this example, nitrogen may be needed where the fields are yellow, but no fertilizer is needed where growth is green and healthy. Using this drone information, the farmer can make decisions about what is needed in various areas of the field and take care of it immediately through programming the field equipment. Here we see an example of data collected by a drone indicating cell divisions of the field and the health of the plants growing in each of those cells. Using this information, 
Farmers can program the equipment on the tractor to apply the various inputs necessary at each individual cell as the tractor gets to that specific location, read from the GNSS receiver. Because of GNSS and its ability to collect real-time location information, it is possible to now have equipment that runs autonomously, in other words, without a human on board driving it. Some examples of autonomous equipment includes the drones you just saw on the previous slides that are collecting field imagery, autonomous mowers on golf courses, and even autonomous tractors. These vehicles are not only precise, but in some cases are safer for humans, who need not be operating equipment like the autonomous orchard sprayers that may be spraying insecticides. Another use for GNSS in agriculture is in locating equipment and livestock on the farm. Radio transmitters equipped with GNSS receivers can be placed on equipment or livestock. The farmer can then track their location and identity. As a last example, foresters and farmers have used GNSS locations to mark areas of timber to manage those resources, whether for harvesting or treatment. In summary, we covered how the Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS, is used in precision agriculture, and we brought together GNSS with equipment such as drones to collect field condition data, and tractors used to treat precise locations on a field based on data-driven decisions.